So the third part of our unit of study, this term, is cells. And cells are the basic building blocks of life, so they're really quite important. Um, that's what biology is already really all about. So let's give it a minute. So just quickly glossing over cell theory, although it's really, really, really important uh, to biologists. We have this theory that's been sort of developed by a whole lot of scientists for me. Natasha Schwann, Theodor Schleiden, and Rudolf Vickau are sort of uh, credited with pulling it all together. But it's, a, it's the work of hundreds of scientists in the 1800s, particularly. And the decision was made that cells are the basic functional unit of a living organism. So a single cell can be a living thing. And we see that in um, things like amoeba. All organisms, all living things, are composed of cells. All cells will arise or come from a pre-existing cell, so cells replace themselves. And therefore the cell is the smallest living organisational unit. These are things that are really critically important to biologists, this idea of the cell. Okay. As I said before, oh, I've got my head out of the way, my head's always in the way. Go away, Gary. Um, as I said in an earlier uh, video, <clears throat> we divide our living things into prokaryotes and, and eukaryotes. I won't go into a great deal of detail, this is pretty much higher level than year seven, but just getting these ideas in your head. Um, so this is the prokaryotic cell. It's pro I know it's prokaryotic because although it's got a, um, a cell membrane, a cell wall around the outside, so it could be a plant, it's also got a flagella, which is a sort of a, a tail for movement, which could make it an animal. But inside here, there are no organelles, there are no organized compartments. And most importantly, the nucleic acid, the uh, DNA, is a free floating um, loop of DNA. We ours, well, I'll talk about ours in a minute. So that's important. <clears throat> also, the cell wall is made of protein and a complex carbohydrate unlike plant cell walls, which are just carbohydrate. Okay, so we contain eukaryotic cells. And you can see the difference straight away. You can see all these compartments. So it's an animal cell. It's got a cell membrane around the outside again. And there's a nucleus with a DNA inside there and all these other organelles that make up these compartments. And each of those organelles have a job to do. So it's a much more organized um, cell. And these cells are essentially a later evolutionary development on the planet. So prokaryotes come first, they're much, much, much older. Eukaryotes come later and start to create more complex life forms like ourselves. Cells are really, 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 really small. So we tend to call them microscopic. And we see most cells under a microscope. Um, and there's so many of them that you, in fact, are about 37 trillion. Well, you're probably not yet, because you're just going into puberty. I'm probably not 37 trillion either, because I'm, I'm old, I'm decaying. But um, as a you know, a, a healthy adult, it's about 37 trillion, give or take a few billion. You're about to go into puberty, into adolescence, and you will produce masses of cells, you know, a couple of billion cells every day, and lose a couple of billion every day. We all do. We're replacing them all the time. So they're tiny little things. So here's a eukaryotic cell, it's quite a large cell in comparison. We can barely see it, it'd be the large cell we might be able to see under the eye, by eye, but really looking at the microscope. Organelles, you can pick that up on a good light microscope, some of them, the bigger ones, but the smaller ones you know, start to need electron microscopes. Bacteria are these prokaryotes, they're much smaller. Viruses aren't living, they're actually a non-living thing, which we'll maybe talk about at some point. Um, they're even smaller again. And the proteins and lipids and other small molecules get smaller and smaller and smaller down to the atom. So this is one nanometer. And this is 100 picometer for an atom. So we're talking tiny. <coughs> <coughs> so this eukaryotic cell here is about 100 micrometer. Still less than a millimeter, right? So very, very small. And that's, keep that in mind, because we're talking about very small stuff. So in, a cell is made up of a whole lot of different organelles. I'm going to do it quickly because we don't really need to worry too much about the detail here at Year 7. But essentially, around the outside is a, a membrane, and the membrane is quite a complex structure. Um, inside that cell, you'll find a jelly-like substance called cytosol. Um, cytosol describes the 
the jelly, and if we say cytoplasm, we mean that and the organelles embedded in it. Then we've got this really special thing called a nucleus, which contains the DNA, and DNA contains all the information that makes the proteins that make us who we are and control how we react to different situations and things. Um, you'll learn about DNA later. Ribosomes are these really tiny little protein structures that help us to create our proteins, it's where protein uh, making starts. The endoplasmic reticulum is where um, proteins are processed from their primary structure into a, a tertiary structure, so it's a, a functioning protein that leaves the, the ER. And we have smooth and rough ER. Rough ER is covered with ribosomes, and smooth ER has none. The Golgi apparatus, believe it or not, this is named after the guy who found it, Professor Golgi. His parents should have changed that name. Um, Golgi apparatus are made for packaging proteins, so you can transport them outside the cell. Um, and they get transported in these little vesicles. And I've got an itchy nose. Uh, here's a little, little vesicle here. And it joins onto the membrane and releases its stuff outside the cell. <clears throat> mitochondria are important. Mitochondria are where cell respiration takes place. So the, the glucose we use as a, a sort of an energy source gets burnt, physically burnt inside this mitochondria, produces heat, produces carbon dioxide, produces water as an outcome, and most importantly, produces energy we can use. A thing called adenosine triphosphate, ATP, for those of you into sport. Um, animal cells also contain a thing called lysosomes. And lysosomes sort of collect the wastes. They also have a whole lot of chemicals which can allow for the to, to be used to kill the cell off when it's time for it to die. Cells can only live for so long. Um, chloroplasts found in plant cells, and these are really important because these are the things that take that energy from the sun and create that glucose. Oh, I spelled glucose incorrectly there, haven't I? Um, and create glucose, that stored chemical energy that the producer is able to make for itself. And then, of course, the plant will also have a mitochondria so it can take that glucose and burn it. Um, plants also have this large vacuole, this is large space inside the plant cell here, and it's basically full of water. It also stores waste, stores chemicals that the plant needs. So it's a big, big storage vacuum. It takes over the cell to a great deal. It's very, very big. Um, and plant cells are much bigger than animal cells for that reason. Plant cells also have a rigid cell wall around the outside, unlike animal cells. So there's three big differences. This rigid cell wall, which gives the plant a structure, because it has a skeleton. We've got bones and muscles for that purpose. These guys have cell walls. And the vacuole being full of water puts pressure on that cell wall to give structure to the plant. It also has these, this large vacuole, obviously, and the chloroplasts. And these are how they're different to, um, to animal cells. And that should be it. Yep, so that's sort of cells in a nutshell. We'll look at cells a bit more in detail in class, obviously. But just a, a quick starter for you. And I'll see you in class. Isn't that nice to say? We're out of lockdown and into class, you beauty. <laughs>